Hi guys, I just wanted to share my testimony with you of why I live my life for God. So I wrote it down here and I'll just read it. Before God came into my life, from when I was a child till elementary school, I always had a good life. But in grade 6, everything changed. I never was the type to fit in very well and I always felt like I was really different from others. I used to be bullied throughout elementary school. At the beginning of high school, my parents separated when I was in grade 6. I didn't have a good relationship with my family and I did not have anyone to be there for me. During this time, I was dealing with depression and heavy anxiety and I, had, I really didn't have anyone to turn to. No one could ever make me feel better, no matter how much advice or support I got from friends. Or I lived in constant anger, anxiety, sadness. I was always confused. I had suicidal thoughts and at points I was even cutting. I was always a quiet and shy and stay out of trouble kid. When I got into high school, that's when I really changed. <clears throat> I knew what drugs and alcohol were. I never really knew what they were until I was actually around it. Never really made one of those cliques or groups or a crew. I was just always had some friends. And in grade nine, my first year of high school, I became really interested in partying and drugs. And at this point, I still didn't try it. In grade nine, I had my first cigarette. Even though I, even though I was tried to do them, I, I always felt like it was wrong and just, it, they always made me constantly feel sick. Um, the way I dealt with all m the depression and anger was to turn to drugs. I was never too much into partying. It was never my thing. I started smoking weed when I was in grade 9, and by grade 10 and 11, I was doing it consistently every day. I had no care for anything, and for once, I was happy, and I felt comfortable, and like I had found the right path for me. Even as I smoked every day, deep down, I just felt something wrong about it. I didn't care that I was slowly ruining my life and my body. And at this point, I had a better family life, and I never understood why I was so miserable and distant towards them. My mom was trying to follow the new age spiritual stuff, but that did not help, and I was just searching for an answer that could fill a gap in my heart. When I was smoking, I relied on it every single day just to get me through life. I needed it every single day. I just couldn't go a day without it. I was relying on it. It was the only thing that could get me through the day. If I didn't have it, I wasn't happy. I did not want to do anything. I was just even more miserable than I was when I didn't have it before I started. Yes, it is hard. I do have temptation the way I used to be, but by receiving Jesus' forgiveness, he has always given me the strength to fight it and to fight those feelings and because because I know that the plans he has in store for me and for you are so much more better than that and much more worth it now that I can see it it's so much more worth it the life I was living the wrong path I was taking it's not worth it it's I thought it was for me but realizing the plans that God has for me is does not even compare to that it's not about religion, it's about realizing that we are all broken and we all need a savior, we need saving and he will deliver you from despair and the terrible things that life will bring if we live a, li a life that's apart from him. Thankfully, I met my boyfriend, he's still my boyfriend, in the summer of grade 10 or 11, I can't really remember. He never liked what I was doing and he always tried to make me cut back. And eventually I didn't do it as much, like smoking, just going in the wrong direction, but I still had no hope and I started experimenting with other drugs, but inside of me something just would not have it, so I stopped doing that. But I was still heading down the wrong path, I became disobedient to my parents, I became even more miserable, and I was just never at home, and I just could not be stopped. And during March break 2015, I went to someone's house and we smoked weed, and this is a point which really impacted my life. Okay, so I'll explain what happened. We went there. I did not have too much because I smoked so little at the time we went to his house. So basically, I had one hit, if you want to call it that. And right after that, maybe two minutes after that, me and my friend were both communicating. We were like, I don't feel anything yet. And within five minutes the most, I blacked out and this was the most terrifying thing um 
So I blacked out. I don't know how long I was out for. I was unconscious. I was just dead in my body. After I regained consciousness, I started to have vision again. I just, I started realizing like, where am I? And I asked people around me, I was like, what was I doing this whole time? Because I was blacked out. I was unconscious. But apparently I was just sitting there and I was alive to them, normal. Apparently my eyes were open, although I felt dead, like I had died and just came back to life because I looked at them and I was like, what was I doing this whole time? And they just said, you were just sitting there. I was like, were my eyes open? They're like, yes, they were. And I didn't, I don't know how long I was out for, what I was even doing. That whole experience, it, it's a lot worse. <laughs> I never experienced anything like that where I was just completely blacked out but to everyone else I was normal I was still conscious but to me I died inside like everything was just black and then it just felt like a nightmare like something I've never experienced before and it was the most scariest thing it was not a normal trip or hallucination and then after that I've never been the same again and right then that day I made it official that I was quitting drugs forever. I Whether that was weed or laced with something else I'm not sure but I've never had experienced something like that before. So for the end of grade 12, 11 and 12 I was doing co-op so I was never at school which really helped me a lot. After that whole trip happened, that whole after I quit doing drugs about a month or two months later, my family, we always believed in God, but um, we kind of got away from that. And my mom read something that redirected her towards him. We stopped following all that new age stuff. She told me that day that I need to accept Jesus into my heart. And I had no idea what she meant or what she was talking about. I didn't even want to at the time because I didn't really care about anything, but I still did it anyways. And I read this prayer called the Miracle Prayer, which I really recommend. <laughs> I didn't have any knowledge about God or Jesus. I always had him with me. But at that point, I decided to accept him into my heart and my life. I admitted my wrongs and I made a decision to completely just turn away from all the wrong things I've ever done. I admitted my crimes against his words. And ever since then, I have never been the same. I finally found that missing piece of my broken, angered, and saddened heart. And that's when I realized that Jesus is the only thing that can fill our hearts. He is the missing puzzle piece to our broken hearts. And I searched for happiness in drugs, sex, people, money, all sorts of things. I just could not, I could never find it. And I would have never found it, that happiness, without God. After I accepted him into my heart, without even really knowing anything about him, I still did it. I accepted him into my heart and my life and my eyes were opened. My life started to change instantly. And I realized that this whole time, God has been with me since the day I was born and he is with you too. The next day my emotions had changed and for those who know me, I have always been such a negative person and I can't tell you how amazing it is. I started becoming such a much more positive and optimistic person. For those who know me now, you can definitely see the change of how negative I used to be compared to now. People and friends fail us and they come and go, but Jesus, he comes and he stays. And being separated from God only led me to disaster. This isn't even about religion at all. I know a lot of people would think this comes off as religious, but honestly, let me tell you, it's not even religion. It's not even about religion. Religion doesn't get you anywhere. I just wanted to also add in that when that whole trip thing happened, after I regained consciousness, I was still fighting and struggling, trying to focus on the people around me, trying to stay conscious because it kept going like in and out of like, I wasn't able to see it, kept trying to go black, but I was trying to focus and fight it. And after the, I actually kind of regained consciousness, for that whole week, I was still out of it. And I can't tell you after I actually regained consciousness, I was shaking so much and I don't shake ever. So it was really weird for that. I was shaking a lot. So after all this, I just want to tell you the great news. And the great news is that you are loved by someone and you are so dearly loved. Jesus loves you more in a moment than anyone could in a lifetime. And I'm not lying to you about that. He loves you so much. I just want to tell you, come to Jesus as you are. You don't have to be perfect to come to him. 
and he he's waiting for you with arms wide open and he said come to me who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest that's what he says and he says come to him and he will heal your broken heart i will never stop <laughs> explaining that to people that how incredible it is that he fills that hole in our hearts he will give you a new beginning, a new life, a new start, a new mind, a new heart. And nothing you have done is unforgivable. Nothing you have done. Don't think just because you were bad, you did this and this, God would never God would never want to be with me and he will never love me. But guess what? He does. And he's waiting for you with arms wide open and he's waiting for you. If you're hearing this today, he wanted you to hear this. I was lost and going down the wrong road, but he turned my life around and he will, he will do the same for yours. If you're willing to, he's waiting for you. And I just want to let you guys know that I just don't feel broken anymore. And my life has completely turned around. At first, I wanted to hold on to that old life, but he worked so much amazing things in my life and I'm so glad I accepted him into my heart. Yes, at first I didn't want to. And I know that for both me and you, that the plans he has for us are so much better and so much more worth it. You are loved and he's waiting for you with arms wide open. Just come as you are. Come as you are to Jesus. He will take you. He's waiting for you with his arms wide open. Let him show you the beautiful plans he has for you. And it was, it was difficult at first. I was hesitating, but it is so worth it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day.